Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I hope y'all are having an awesome, awesome Tuesday. I had an awesome Tuesday. Went and ate lunch with my best friend from high school. I have two from high school. And uh, we have some fun when we get together. Just caught up on what's going on in our lives and how thankful, thankful we are for things and just... Uh, had a great time. Got to eat some good food too. So tonight we're going to talk about Psalms 10 or Psalm 10. The whole book of Psalms. We're still diving into Psalms. We are doing Psalms 10. And I worked on my other camera and now my hair is really lighter. So I don't know. It's, it's closer to looking normal. That my shirt is, I don't know what it's doing. All right, so we're going to pray and we're going to read Psalms 10. And again, I'll, my bookmark is somewhere. There it is. I didn't put it in last night. I guess because we quickly flipped over to Revelation. Not sure what else we're going to do tonight. Sometimes what we read in the psalm and what we read in the study part, um, it reminds me of what else I want to read. We'll just have to wing it. All right, well, let's uh, pray. Let's go to God in prayer, in prayer like we need to, and uh, just be thankful and grateful. I don't think that... I'm doing that for my other camera. I'm sorry. Sometimes it's flipped. But I had everything set up and then I turned I accidentally turned it off. But I got it all set back up too. I really like the colors better in Facebook than I do in here. But I'll just keep working on it until I get it right. My problem is I don't know how to adjust them to not my eyes look brown and they aren't they're green. But at least they're not blue. They have been blue. Okay, again. I will do the camera thing on my own time. All right, well, let's go to God in prayer. God, we just, we just praise you and thank you, God, for all the many things that you've done in our lives, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control, God, and there is absolutely nothing that gets by you. I don't know how... You keep up with every one of us. I don't know how you know every hair on our head that we have. You know when we're sad. You know when we're happy. You know all of our emotions, God. You know all the things that we do. Things that are good. Things that are bad. God, you are all knowing. God, we just uh, praise you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm, our strength and our refuge, our healer, our redeemer. God, we just thank you for all these things and so much more because there's so much more that you do for us. God, you are magnificent and powerful and mighty. God, you are miraculous, God. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. But yet, God, you are loving and caring and kind and compassionate. And you are patient, God. You want none to perish. You want all to come to Jesus to be saved. Thank you for loving us and calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just cry out to the lost we just cry out to you to save the lost, to open their eyes and their ears to the truth, to soften their hearts, to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved, God. We pray for the prodigals to come home to repent, God, and to realize that their relationship is much better than anything they can get in the world, and for you to reconcile that relationship with you and them. 
God, we pray for this massive storm in Louisiana and Alabama. God, we pray for these people. Many evacuated, but the destruction is clear to see. God, we just pray that you would meet their needs, God, that you would be with them, that you would help miraculously their electricity to be restored, their internet, all the things that they need, God, their food, their water supply, God, that you would meet these needs, that you would send people to be the hands and feet of Jesus that will attend to these people's needs. God, many of these that evacuated may not have a home when they go back home. God, we just pray that you would be with them and that you would open other doors for them. God, we just pray for all the other disasters that are going on. The earthquakes, the famines, the floods, the uh, volcano eruptions. All the many things that are happening all at once. All these birth pangs, God, that Jesus talked about. We just pray that you would meet these people's needs, God. That they would cry out to you in their time of disaster that it would draw them closer to you, that it would draw them into a relationship with you through Jesus, and that they would see the hands and feet of Jesus, the, feel the loving compassion of Jesus through others. And God, we just pray. We pray for these military families that lost their loved ones so quickly. God, we just pray for these families. We pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We pray for the brave military men and women that are fighting for their lives right now in Germany in the hospital after that explosion, God. We just pray that you would be with them and their families, that you would heal their bodies. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. I pray for my friend Josie and my daughter, and Mr. Mike, God, that you would continue to heal their bodies, God, and just make them stronger and stronger every day. I praise you because my daughter did call me feeling better this morning, God, than she has in weeks. And I thank you for that. I know that that is answered prayer on her behalf. God, please just continue to give these people strength. And uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors, let us continue to look at Psalms. I think a lot of this is pretty timely for some of the things that we're going through right now. Um, things are pretty much a mess, but God is in control. And that's who we trust. We trust with everything that we have. We trust God. He has a plan and purpose for everything, even when they don't make sense to us. He, we have to trust Him. We must trust Him. So Psalm 10 is a song of confidence in God's triumph over evil. You know, it looks like evil is winning. It does at times. It looks like evil is winning. But we need to remember that evil is not going to win. They are not going to win. God in Jesus and the Holy Spirit, Jesus has already overcome. They're going to win. They're the ones that are going to overcome all the evil and destroy the evil. So it's time, if, you've, if you're still on the fence about whether to be saved through Jesus or not, it's time. It's time to make that decision. So let's read this. This doesn't say that this is a psalm of David, so it may not be. This is a song of confidence in God's triumphant, his triumph over evil. It says, Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride persecutes the poor. Let them be caught in the plots which they have devised. For the wicked boasts of his heart's desire. He blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. 
His ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he sneers at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. Oh, it skipped that one. He sits in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places, he murders the innocents. The innocent. His eyes are secretly fixed on the helpless. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He, he lies in wait to catch the poor. He catches the poor when he draws him into his net. So he crouches. He lies low that the helpers may fall by his strength. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see me. How many, I think that's what keeps happening to my deal is I keep dropping it on the floor. How many people that are caught up in evil do you see that has this attitude? Like God does not exist. I'm going to do what I want to for me. Uh, everything is about me. Nothing is about God. How many people do you see with this attitude? Because it's not going to last. Sooner or later, God is going to bring the judgment. God is going to bring his wrath, just like we read in, in Revelation last night. There will be a point where God says, enough, enough, and he will bring judgment. Don't be here in his judgment. Be with Jesus. So arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand. Do not forget the humble. Why do the wicked renounce God? He has said in his heart, you will not require an account. But you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief. You repay it by your hand. The helpless commits himself to you. You are the help, helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evil one. Seek out his wickedness until you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations have perished out of his land. Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear to hear, to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress no more. So God is, God is going to, is that what I read last night? There's no study part on Psalm 10. I don't know why, that's kind of weird. But there's just no study part. So let's read the image of God. It's up here in my study Bible too. Image of God, his reflection in us. What a magnificent concept. God's creation of mankind in his image. Patterned after him. Mirroring a family resemblance of him. 2 Corinthians 3.18 This does not pertain to the physical nature, but rather to the spiritual and moral nature. How are we like God? We are capable of communicating, and in so doing, we can bless or curse. That's so true. We are creative, and creativity gives us joy and satisfaction. Proverbs 31, 13 through 22. We experience emotions and feelings. We long for relationship and fellowship. Psalm 16, 11. We discern between right and wrong, Isaiah 6, 5. We act and are responsible for our actions, John 3, 18. We long to pursue him. Mary sat at Jesus' feet listening to him, 
Jesus let her know that sitting at his feet was important. Luke 10, 42. Even though the original intimate relationship between God and humanity was severed by the fall in Genesis 3, 5 through 7, God has pursued his children down through the ages, sending his son that we might be reconciled to him and become his daughters and sons, his heirs. His image can be reflected in us. Through Christ, the image is brought back into focus that his glory shines from the reflection. It says, see also Genesis one twenty six. Okay. It just it lists a bunch of verses that I'm not going to list. But we are made in the image of God. He did make us a lot like him. We are not powerful and we are not a God. But he did give us a lot of his attributes, like his creativity. And uh, he gave us emotions and feelings. And he gave us the ability to discern between right and wrong. And uh, the capability of communication. So that is how we are like God. He also created us for his plan and purpose, not for our own. And that's another, you know, way that we are made in his image. We are made for him. We are not made for us. And so what we were talking about, all this evil and wicked, that we were reading what the evil and wicked do, this is happening right now. There are evil and wicked people that are out there that are hunting people down and hurting them and killing them for absolutely no reason. Maybe because they don't agree with them or they don't believe the same way they do. That is no, they have no right to hurt people and to kill people. And God will judge. God will come and judge every one of these. They also have an opportunity for forgiveness and redemption, if that's what they choose. See, God gives us a new day every day. You might have been the worst drug addict yesterday, but he, get, he gave you a new day at the beginning of this day that you can choose. You can break that addiction through Jesus Christ, the strength of Jesus Christ, that addiction can be broken. But he gives us free will that we can choose. We can choose to do what we did yesterday, which didn't work. Or we can choose to follow Jesus today and walk in step with Jesus and do the things of God and receive the blessings of being obedient and doing the things of God. And is life perfect when you're a Christian and you're following God? No, it's not. But you don't go through things alone. You go through things with God, the guiding of the Holy Spirit, the strength of Jesus. And you have other Christians that will pray with you too, pray you through things. So don't ever think that you are not good enough to be saved by Jesus because we are all sinners. We have all failed and we will continue to fail because we are not perfect. We are not in that perfected body. But someday we will be in that perfected body. And we will be perfect then. But we are not now. We are human. We are too human to be perfect right now. But we do have the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And He does help us determine what is right or wrong. Just like what we just read. So don't be on the side of wrong. Get on the side of right. Ask Jesus into your heart to be your Savior, to lead you to that eternal home that God has prepared, that Jesus went to prepare for us, that God has available for everyone who calls upon his name to be saved. So how do we want to do the salvation message? Because I'm not going to be on here long. I need to go feed my child. 
let's put it, I don't, I don't need to feed him. I need to facilitate his dinner, which means make it and put it in front of him. He actually can feed himself. It's not like I have to feed him like a baby. I just have to fix it for him and put it in front of him and sometimes lead him in there. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do steps to peace with God. Maybe you don't have any peace. This is the way to have peace. These are the steps to peace with God. So step one. I'll show you the picture. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Well, it's, you can't even read that. can't even read it up close. There's a glare or something on it. I don't know. Um, on Facebook, it can be read. But on this other camera, it can't be. So step one, God's purpose, peace and eternal life. God loves you and he wants you to live in peace with him and to receive eternal life. I need to write down what I just did. So I don't do it again. So tomorrow is a new month. But I still feel led to continue with Psalms. Okay, sorry. God's purpose, peace and eternal life. God loves you and he wants you to live in peace with him and to receive e eternal life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Even these wicked people, they can believe on Jesus and they can be saved. There have been very wicked people that have had visions and images of Jesus come to them. And they have given their life to Jesus and they now follow Jesus. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 6, 23. Since God planned for us to be at peace with him, and to have eternal life, why are many people not enjoying this experience? So step two, our problem. This is our problem. Sin and separation. God did not make us robots to mindlessly love and obey him. Instead, he gave us a will and freedom of choice. But like Adam, we often choose to disobey God and go our own selfish ways. Read Genesis chapters 2 through 3. This side of our nature is called sin, and it separates us from God. Um, the Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23. So after Adam sinned, the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3.23. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear, Isaiah 59.2. So step three is God's remedy, and that is the cross. Jesus Christ is the only answer to this problem of separation from God. He died on the cross and rode, rose from the grave to pay the penalty for our sins, completely bridging the gap between us and God. God has provided the only way, and we must make the choice. The Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Acts 4, 12. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2, 5. 
Verily, verily, I tell you, whoever hears my word, Jesus, and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. John 5, 24. And so step four, our response. We must receive Christ. We can receive Jesus Christ when we believe in his message and trust in him alone to save us. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 1. The Bible says all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him, Jesus Christ, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Acts 10:43. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. So Jesus bridges the gap between us and God. He is the only way. He is the only one that can do that. Okay. Okay. How to receive Christ? Well, one, that pause. One, admit your need, saying, I am a sinner. We are all sinners. Two, be willing to turn from your sins, which is repent. Three, believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. Four, through prayer, invite Jesus Christ to come in and control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive him, receive Jesus as your Savior. So what to pray? Well, this is the prayer. And if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior tonight, then repeat these words after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am sinful and I need your forgiveness. I believe that you died to pay the penalty for my sin. I want to turn from my sin nature and follow you instead. I invite you to come into my heart and life in Jesus name I pray Amen. There's more to this um, track. God's assurance, his word, if you sincerely prayed this prayer and asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, do you know what he has given you? He has given your new life. When you receive Christ, you're born into God's family through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit who indwells every believer this is called regeneration or new birth. God bless you as you begin your new life in Christ. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 39. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1. He who has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 12-13. So if you did invite Jesus into your heart, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You will now have peace with God. And uh, your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life.
and the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his son. So it is time to do read the Bible every day, pray and praise. Time to do Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So God will give us peace. And that is the peace that we don't understand sometimes. Because even in our turmoil, we can have peace. Even in our turmoil, we can have joy. All right, well, I am going to pray again, and I'm going to get off of here and upload this video and go and facilitate Seth's dinner. God, we just praise you and thank you for this time to learn more and more about your word learn more and more about your heart. We just pray, God, that you would um, help us to draw closer to you, help us to trust you more, help us to have the boldness to share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus. We just pray, God, that you would um, help us to um, pray sincerely for all all that are involved in all the things that are going on in this world. God, we just pray for all the sick. We just pray that you would heal their bodies. We pray for our military. We pray for our law enforcement. And we pray for our nurses and all of our medical staffs. We pray for strength and protection for them as they are on the front line of this disease. And we pray for the schools too, God. We just pray that this would be a good school year for the teachers, for the students, for the faculty, for the administration, for the school boards, Lord, that they would follow your ways, that they would follow your teachings in your word. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my pray and share warriors, I hope you have an awesome rest of your evening. And awesome tomorrow, which is Wednesday. I will not be here tomorrow night. I will be at youth. So I will see you Thursday night. And tomorrow will be September 1st. I can't really believe that, but it is. I'll have to find me another piece of paper to write on because I'm out of paper. All right. Well, God bless you all and your families abundantly. And much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.